In the last video I covered what made Germanic languages have so many vowels, specifically the sound changes that made them. But the sound changes I covered in that video were common changes that each Germanic language had undergone. Obviously not every Germanic language is the same, especially with their vowels, so what makes them different? I think it helps to start with a tree of West Germanic languages, which can be split into three groups, Ingvianic, Istvianic, and Ermanonic. Ingvianic became English, Scots, the Frisian languages, and Low German. Istvianic became Dutch, Afrikaans, and Limburgish. And Ermanonic became High German. It helps to know how these languages are related as there are certain changes that apply to entire families. First is the diphthongs in Proto-West Germanic, which I maybe didn't cover so well in the last video. Proto-West Germanic had four diphthongs, I, Au, Eu, and Iu. In pretty much every language, eu and eu became modern-day e. But the diphthongs i and au changed in many different ways. In general, most languages turn the diphthongs into long vowels or other diphthongs, except for High German. The Ingvianic nasal spirit in law causes the loss of nasals before fricatives, causing the nasalization and lengthening of a preceding vowel, and applies to all Ingvianic languages, and Dutch, with a few words. For example, you have the Proto-West Germanic word tonth, which becomes tant in Dutch, but tooth in English. Fünf in German, but five in English. anglo frisian brightening is the fronting of a to a, which occurs unless followed by a geminate or with a back vowel in the next syllable. As well as the fronting of a to a. This is not a major change, and was partially reversed in Middle English, for example, but it was a change. A process of velar palatalization happened in both English and Frisian separately, but the two processes were very similar. In certain circumstances in English, k, g, g, and sk were palatalized to ch, j, y, and sh. Very similarly in Frisian, k and g became tz and y. For example, you have German gestern and Dutch gisteren, but English yesterday and West Frisian juster. German Käse and Dutch Kass, but English Cheese and West Frisian Cies. Front vowel and rounding also occurred separately in both English and Frisian, causing U to merge with E and E to merge with A. The H sound written as GH in English was lost entirely, mostly disappearing and often lengthening or diphthongizing the previous vowel. In some cases it became F like the word laugh. In German, the sound is still present, lachen. Next, the great vowel shift, probably one of the most well-known sound changes. It was responsible for long vowel raising, which also occurred in other Germanic languages. But there are certain parts of it that didn't happen in other Germanic languages, particularly the diphthongs au and a becoming a and a, which is why these sounds are written as au and ai. Final devoicing is a process where when a word ends in a voiced consonant that has an unvoiced equivalent, it will be pronounced unvoiced. It occurs in every West Germanic language other than English. For example, the D is pronounced in English good, but not in Dutch goed. Dutch has a shift that fronted U to E. No other Germanic languages have this. Regardless, it's the reason why U in Dutch represents the E sound. The High German consonant shift is a set of shifts that happen to High German, partially other languages. First are the shifts P to F, T to Tz to S, and K to H. These changes happened only in German. Next is P to P, T to Tz to Tz, and K to K. Only the first two occurred in Standard German, but all three in Bavarian, Swiss, and some other dialects. Next is B to P, D to T, and G to K. This happened in all dialects of and only two High German. Finally is Th to Th to D, which occurred in every language but English. Anyways, thanks for watching. The uh, last video did pretty well. It got a lot of views and I gained some subscribers from it. Feel free to inflate those numbers.